Joshua trees aren't even actual trees? What the f- Hi, and welcome to today's video. What's a Joshua tree? Well, it's this thing. But the name is actually pretty misleading because they're not trees at all. And also, who's Joshua? So yes, we have a lot of questions to explore today. So let's get right into it. Let's start with talking about what a tree actually is. Well, a tree is a plant that has four main parts, a long stem, branches, leaves, and roots. But to truly be a tree, the stem has to be made of wood, and the stems of Joshua trees are not. Instead, the so-called trunks or stems of Joshua trees are actually just made of thick fibers, which, spoiler, there's actually a lot of cool uses for these, but we'll get to that. Because they're not real trees with wood, Joshua trees don't have annual growth rings like actual trees do, and this makes it really difficult for us to determine how old they are. Instead, what we rely on in determining their age is their height and the average rate of growth per year. But the thing is, Joshua trees grow very slowly. They live in the Mojave Desert, which is located in the southwestern part of the United States. and Nothing really happens fast in the desert. If you've ever cared for succulents, you'll know that they don't do much. Well, he's a platypus. They don't do much. So Joshua trees grow very slowly, like half an inch to three inches per year. From knowing this though, we've been able to estimate that most Joshua trees live about 150 years. But there is one tree in California that could be as old as a thousand years, which is pretty awesome. I think it'd be hilarious though if that tree just kind of played a joke on us all, like maybe there was a lot of rain for a couple years or something, so it just like shot up. And then we thought, oh, it's only growing half an inch per year, but look, it's so tall, because rain was secretly there, but now we think it's a thousand years old and it's probably like 50. Anyway. Assuming that the tree is actually a thousand years old though, that is pretty crazy to think about because that means that it's been around since the Crusades of 1095 or the Renaissance in the 1500s. It witnessed the American Revolution and the invention of iPhones and TikTok all in the same lifetime. That is just crazy to think about how long that is. And it's even crazier when you put that in the context of the, the existence of the entire universe because it feels like a long time for us and it is a massive chunk of human history, but it's actually almost no time at all. So food for thought there. Anyway though, if these trees aren't trees, then what are they? Well, they are succulents. And not just any succulents, but a member of the agave family. So it's more accurate to say that Joshua trees are actually agave plants that look and behave like trees. Almost as if an agave plant was out in the desert, saw an actual tree and was like, yo, that looks sick. I want to try that. And then they did. Joshua pseudo trees are a critical member of the United States Southwestern ecosystem. 25 different species of birds make nests in their branches. And a number of other animals, like lizards and several mammals, use the trees for shelter and for food. One animal is the Scots Oriole, a beautiful yellow and black bird that makes its home among the Joshua branches. And many, many years ago, humans also had an important relationship with these trees. Native Americans used the tough, spiky leaves of the trees to make baskets and sandals, and they would eat the flower buds as well as the seeds too. They often roasted the seeds to eat them, and apparently they made a pretty healthy addition to their diets. Also, did I just say flower buds? Well, I did, and something that I thought was really interesting about Joshua trees that I didn't know when I came to make this video is that they actually have flowers. In fact, the way that their flowering works is actually pretty interesting. The trees have to have well-timed rains and a crisp winter freeze in order for them to flower. We think that perhaps the freeze damages the growing end of the branch and consequently stimulates flowering. The whole process of this is a bit touchy and there are some Joshua trees that have never flowered or even branched. But once the Joshua tree does flower, there are literal lives at stake. Not to be dramatic, but we're talking about plants so I gotta make it exciting and you know what, in a way there are actual lives at stake. 
The survival of a species of plant depends on its ability to reproduce and disperse its seeds. And a critical step in this process is pollination. There is only one bug in the entirety of the Mojave Desert that pollinates the Joshua tree, and that is the yucca moth, an unlikely but true hero. Without this moth, the Joshua tree wouldn't be able to reproduce. But fortunately for the moth, the Joshua tree is very grateful, and in return for the moth's help, the tree provides food and a safe place to lay its eggs. In this way, the two species have a symbiotic or mutually beneficial relationship that actually helps keep the two species alive. So maybe the Mojave Desert doesn't have trees, but the Joshua tree is a critical part of the ecosystem and it tells a tale of resilience. I mean, come on, it's a massive succulent that looks like a tree standing out in the middle of the desert that has become characteristic for that area of the country. That's pretty cool. All right, but before we go, we have one more question to answer, and that is, who's Joshua? Well, it turns out that Joshua trees were actually named by Mormon immigrants in the 19th century. The story is that they saw the trees in the desert and noted how its branches and leaves were stretched out, almost as if pointing them westward. Because it was guiding them on their journey, they named them Joshua trees. We don't have cold hard evidence of this in the historical record, but maybe this is really where the name came from. So there you have it. The answer to the question of what are Joshua trees? If you like this video, please go ahead and leave a like down below. And if you're curious about learning more about nature and science, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.